Hi guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm just here for another one of my weekly workshops with our mass making um, sessions that we're doing. So today I am going to make these pretty um, envelope pockets. So that's the one, obviously, you know, that's um, how they turn out kind of in the finish. So if you want to make some of these with me, I have used these um, DL is what they're referred to here in the UK. They're 110 by 220 millimetres um, in size. Just these brown envelopes. So that's what I have used. You could use probably used envelopes, you know, or you could possibly use a different size envelope if you can't get these. Um, but that's what you're going to need. You're going to obviously need your scissors, your glue, and a variety of papers, maybe some book page, maybe some sheet music, maybe some um, scrapbook paper or some printables, something like that. And obviously, if you're going to decorate yours at the end, you're going to need some things to decorate it um, with at the end. So, um, yeah, I hope that you're going to join me and let's get stuck in. So, again, I have just grabbed a whole bunch of papers and scraps and some book page and various things. Um, you know, off cuts of things like that. And then I've got here a new pack of um, what we refer to in this country as DL envelopes. Um, I don't know whether they're referred to that anywhere else or whether that's just something we use over here. Um, but as you can see, the measurement is 110 by 220 millimetres. Um, you know, so yeah, hopefully these are universally sized, even if they're referred to as something completely different so there's 50 in this pack and <laughs> hopefully we're not going to be here to do 50 well I mean that would be great to have made 50 but hopefully I'm not going to bore you quite to that extent so I've just grabbed out a bunch now how I like to start let me move all of this out of the way so that we're not just looking at endless piles of stuff which can become a bit overwhelming I like to start by sealing my envelope down and I do always seal it with some glue because um, you know I like to make sure that things are stuck really well so you know although they are self seal you know you can't always guarantee that they're going to stay stuck so I just like to you know seal them myself as well so I'm just going to now boringly do a bit of that so I hope you guys are um, having a good day I hope that maybe you're you know mass making alongside me and um, doing some bits and pieces so if you are you know I'd love to know whether you're doing the same pieces as me or you know whether you're working on something different you know, or maybe you're working on something like a journal. You know, maybe you're not mass making at all. Maybe you're actually doing a complete journal. I'd love to hear below. I love picturing what people are up to whilst they're watching. Because, um, you know, whilst I'm chatting away, it's nice to picture that if people are doing the same things that I'm doing or, you know, whether they're doing other things. So I hope that you guys are really having um, a good stash clearing um, experience, you know, through doing these weekly mass making projects because, um, or workshops, because, you know, they are quite productive, aren't they, to be able to get rid of some of our stash and, um, you know, have a whole bunch of things ready on the go. So I hope that you guys are finding that your stash is gradually going down I mean, I've said this each time but I have to say I'm not really noticing much of a difference in my stash it's still pretty huge um, but nonetheless my my other stash my new stash now of ready-made pieces is growing you know pretty pretty quickly which is very awesome um, yeah, so hopefully you guys are finding the same. So, you know, 
if you are noticing your actual stash i.e your scraps and you know supplies or scraps and you know paper and things like that if you're noticing that going down you're probably noticing a new pile of different type type stash of your ready-made pieces that's now growing so um i'm not sure what's worse but at least these are then going to be useful stash you know useful and very quick quick to grab stash rather than useless you know having to then do things with it as you come to touch it so hopefully that's how you guys feel and I know I'm constantly repeating myself on this but you know I do kind of just think boring as this is to just dedicate whoops just dedicate, you know, up to an hour a week to bulk make a whole bunch of one item. That's a pretty good use of time, I think. So, um, you know, I know these are not going to be riveting videos to watch, but, you know, they are at least quite productive. So, and as I've said in the past, you know, I just find crafting away, chatting with you guys so much more exciting than just me sitting there you know on my lonesome at home I wouldn't do bulk items you know I would just find that just too boring so this is uh, very helpful for me right, just do a couple more and then I'll have a count because I haven't got a clue how many I've actually done here but it must be must be getting up now to a reasonable number I mean, on the whole, I think we have made like 12 items roughly per per workshop, but a one or two, I can't think what the items were, of the, the policy envelopes. I think it was the policy envelopes. We obviously didn't get so many of them done because they're pretty time consuming to make. So I think we only managed about seven, if I recall. But still not too bad, to be honest, because... Um, you know, they are time consuming to make, so, you know, I don't think that was too bad going. And I mean, to be fair, actually, the more time consuming the item, the better it is to have it ready made. So, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right, we've got twelve going there. So let's stick with our 12, you know, and it's not a big deal, I'm not, you know, it doesn't have to be 12 that we make. So what I like to do is then just fold them up, you know, into a pocket. Now this is not my idea at all, I cannot claim it to be my idea. I couldn't tell you who I first saw do this, it may have been Yvonne Preston. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I definitely have seen her do it, um, you know, but I can't tell you whether or not it was actually her idea. I have, you know, I have seen her do it, but I couldn't tell you, I'm afraid, whether it's her idea or not. Right. Now, because I was busy chatting, I totally forgot what I normally try and do, because I normally try and have the flap side down so that obviously the front of it is you know predominantly plain and then you've just got this bit here that we're going to cover up anyway and the reason why is just because where I folded these in can you see where that's not glued down 100% just when you're sorting things in and out it may just get caught up on there so you know it's not a rule but it it is something that you know when I remember I do try and do that so just going forward I'm going to do them that way round. We forget, or you know, I don't know about you guys, but I forget sometimes when I haven't made something for a little while, I forget the kind of tips that I've learned over time just through mistakes really. Um, you know, and then I do it and think, oh, I remember now, I, you know, I had this happen last time and I thought, oh, I'm not going to do that that way again but you know once then a little bit of time elapses 
again I just then forget whatever that was that I made a mental note to remember just goes completely out of my head you know never to be remembered again so that was one of those examples right so I've made all my folds like that Again, I don't measure, but as you can see, I mean, they're all pretty much similar size. So, you know, we've got them roughly, roughly the same. So I've brought along a whole bunch of different stuff. I could just pull in a couple of things. So I've got this here. I have got, just pick in the ones that I think would be quite nice to use. So maybe that. Um, maybe that one and I might marry them up with some book page I think so let me just have a look and actually I just now I forgot that I've actually got these tiny pieces which might be better to use so let's just pop all that stuff to one side for a moment so going to probably have to do these you know as I go I think so put that on there no I'm not going to be able to use that one because that picture will show right so now what I should do is probably cut a couple of these at the same time I mean that's definitely the efficient way to do it isn't it but whether or not then my pieces will just end up really wonky, I'm not sure. So let's try and clip them together and see whether that makes a difference. So we're going to trim them down, you know, roughly at the bottom. Oh my goodness. And then we're going to trim them. I'm going to trim just one side at a time. I'm going to cut that side down like that. Okay. And then we want to have it kind of just in slightly. So just cut it here. I should have really done this the other way around, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to trim down the top just slightly so as we have a bit less white space going on there okay and obviously I can trim these up now you know but we've just done the bulk the bulk of the cutting okay, that's that one. oh still needs to come down more I might have to just trim that hole title off of there okay right so I might do all of my insides first because again that would probably be you know the most efficient thing to do so I'll just drop that down And then I can just decide what things to marry them up with. So just chop them like that. Okay. Oops. Right, just bin in some of this so it's a bit less cluttered on here. Now I'm just having a look at these offcuts see whether there's enough here to actually do the bottom and I think there is actually so again I'm just going to pop them together and I'll clip them together again so I'm going to just take off the bottom Just see, I might have taken too much off, I think, but never mind. Right, 
I'll just again just trim that in there. And then we'll just trim around about here, I think. So, you know, and again, we can obviously, you know, mix them up or just have the, you know, just as book page or just as patterned papers, you know, or we can obviously mix them together. So, what's that one? use that I think on here just because this um, seemed a little bit too big small sorry for that other one it's probably a bit too big for this one so just trim that down a little bit right so that's one ready for gluing that's two I'm just going to again trim that in slightly Again, not very straight at the bottom, but never mind. Let's just trim that up and neaten it up slightly. Okay. And then this one here. So again, I'll just chop that there. You know, and as I say, I mean, I'm not measuring or anything. I'm just eyeballing it, which is why it's probably turning out pretty messy. But never mind. Never mind. Right. So that's those. Right. Let's mix it up and do a couple with some patterned papers now. So it's a bit more fun. So I might do that one there. So again, just chop that down. And again, these are just some of my rosy skies. Um, oh, I'm struggling to actually do this, so I'm afraid. So, right, these are some of my rosy skies collage pages. So, let me do it this way round. I think it's because um, I've just done a different video. So I'm doing these back to back, so I'm actually quite thirsty now. And um, my ability to focus has obviously gone completely, completely out the window. And then we could have this actually just down there, couldn't we? Let's do that. And then that's a whole other, another sheet gone, used up. And again, I'll just trim that down a bit. Down a bit more. Okay, there we go. Pop that to one side. Just hang on to this, this little scrap, just in case I want it for anything else. Right, this is some of my butterfly house paper that I've again just got left over. So what I'm going to do, I think, is trim it down. Actually, I'll trim it down lengthways. So we want it about here. Just see how wide we want that roughly. And then I'll trim up that torn edge afterwards. So just pop that there. And just trim it up here. Gosh, I have made a horrendous job of cutting that. So All sorts of trimming needs to happen on this piece, so let's try and neaten this edge up first. And then I'm just going to trim it down here just slightly just to get rid of the torn edge. So that 
So again, we could just marry it up with that, to be honest, because then that's, you know, again, really nice. And we've got rid of, you know, quite a large, oh my gosh, look at my cutting. What is going on? I know I said I'm thirsty, but this is ridiculous. Right, let's just trim that down. See whether I need to take any more off just here. Okay, so that's that one. Just going to check the time. Oh, wow. We are only at 20 minutes, which is unbelievably fast, isn't it? We have raced through these um, these pieces, so I'm feeling quite quite good about that. So I might now just use a bit of sheet music. So again, what I might do is just trim it you know, roughly here, I think. Oops. Yeah, this is very flimsy sheet music. So, um, you know, it's very vintage and it's very fragile. That's that piece. And then we'll just put it down. what's gone on at that corner either. I'll just trim down the um, height because I mean it doesn't really matter if if we're not right down to the bottom. I just prefer it kind of like that I think so now I wonder whether we've actually got enough to do a second one. I think we have. So I'll just trim this in. And then we'll just trim the top again, just slightly. Okay, so I might just trim it down on this edge, so as we've got slightly less white down the edge of there. Okay, that's those two. And then, now, unfortunately, these pieces probably aren't wide enough to actually go. Yeah, that's a shame, isn't it? Because um, that would have been a good, good way to use these because I could have done them matching. But unfortunately, they're not actually big enough. So let me see what other scraps I've got laying around here. I've got some of that Go Gently large page so I could use some of that so again we'll just cut that down oops like this Wow, that one's actually cut pretty straight first first time, which uh, that was a first, wasn't it? And again, we could do that actually with the matching matching paper. So, you know, again, that's a really good use because the whole scrap is gone then, which is very exciting. slightly there at the bottom. Not a lot. Just slightly on the other side. Again, not much, but just a fraction. There we go. So that's another one. Okay, I'm going to bin this because it's 
stitchy, I don't know. Now, do I bin this? That's the question. Probably not, because it's it's a reasonable size. Again, I mean, not not really, is it? But I couldn't quite bring myself to um, get rid of it, so <laughs> so it's been now kept in amongst the rubbish. Right, I've got this, which is you know proper scrap size. So we can pop that on there. And that just needs to up the top. Okay. Wow, I'm um, really getting rid of some of my scraps now. So, well, well, I mean that is debatable. I have to be truthful, but I am at least, you know, working on it. Right here, I've got piece of my TikTok there or shall we do a background I think with this so again what I might do is just cut that down roughly here I think so and again I'm just going to cut around this you know so I get it roughly to size and then I'll obviously neaten it up in a minute so I hope that everybody's having a good day I hope you're, um, you know, working on something interesting. I'd love to see if you have been crafting along, you know, doing the same thing as me. I would love to see your finished results. Are you decorating yours up or are you keeping them plainish, you know, so that you've got blank canvases to pull into journals? You know, are you just making foundation pieces like I am? Or are you actually, you know, making the entire piece? I think that's probably just personal preference, you know, which way you'd do that, whether you would make entire pieces or just... I think I'll go for that. Um, or just doing... I think that would be personal preference, yeah, if you were um, decorating them up or just doing the bases, you know, and maybe once I come to start using these pieces, I'll kind of wish that I had decorated them up. Time will tell, really, what, what works best, you know, to do. I mean, my view is if I've just got a bunch of quite plainish ones... I can then tailor them to fit, you know, whatever project I'm actually working on at the time. So hopefully that's going to be, you know, how it's going to pan out. But I mean, so often obviously things don't really go as planned, do they? So there is no guarantee whatsoever. So I might do, might do that across there, that's quite pretty. This is a double-sided paper, isn't this back gorgeous? Which actually now I'm thinking, why on earth am I using this planar side? Why am I not using this beautiful patterned floral side? So I think I will go for that. Oops. Because that is very pretty, isn't it? It's because I thought, you know, keep it quite neutral and then it will be versatile. But, I mean, actually, that's so pretty. It's a shame, you know, a waste of that paper to just use that other side of it, isn't it? So, right, what else have I got here? Got some more of that TikTok paper. So I could put that like that, or actually, on the other side, I've got plain blue, which, to be fair, you know, if I'm making blank canvas pieces... The plain blue is probably more useful. So I'm going to go for the plain. Just neaten that up along the bottom. So it wasn't very straight again. Tidy that up slightly down there. Okay. 
that's that one. Now, do we want to marry that with some sheet music or do we want to marry that with some book page? I think the sheet music looks like the winner. So just grab in a bit more sheet music. So again, I'm just going to trim this around, you know, roughly, roughly to size. And then obviously trim it down in a moment. So then just put it down here. So again, I'm just going to trim up the top and then trim down the side. I'll just trim this side down a bit more and I mean probably the smart thing would be to actually use this as a template for my next cutting piece but you know again that's not <laughs> that just sounds too organized and too efficient it's not um, not really something that I perhaps do this I do love this, I must say. So um, let's just cut it down here. And just see how we want it. So probably cut it down about there. Oh gosh, I'm not making a good job. Too bad actually. Again I'm going to actually be ruthless and bin those pieces so it doesn't happen very often but and there we go that one's really good because that's sort of about the right size so we'll just trim that one down. It's a bit of a shame because it's got a bit of blue biro on there but it can't be helped really. So there we go. And again, I mean, if you've got things like that, you can always just cover them up, to be honest. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. shall we use for this one got a bunch of things here so just the lilac I mean it doesn't really matter to be honest but you know just just choosing or shall we have this oh maybe that maybe that so let's just cut that out slightly more okay just bring that edge in a bit okay right oops need to just trim that slightly more Oh gosh, what am I doing? <laughs> I couldn't get my scissors to kind of grab onto the paper. Right, okay, so I've cut all of my bits now. Let me just check the time. 34 minutes. Cut all of my bits, so time to glue. 
So I hope my glue's not clogged up. So far, so good. to smooth the glue out. Okay, and then we're going to glue this piece on here. And I forgot to say, but this double-sided paper, I mean, this was just some cheapy, you know, cheapy paper from one of our shops that we have here, and I'm pretty sure it's their own brand of paper. I couldn't tell you what the paper pack is called, I'm afraid, but I've noticed because it's actually, although it's cheap and cheerful, you know, it's um, it's nice and thick, you know, and it's uh, beautiful patterns. But I have noticed because it is quite thick, sometimes I, you know, if I didn't want to use it in its entirety because it's too thick, very carefully you can peel the two layers apart now I'm not saying that you can peel them apart to a point where both layers would be usable um, you know invariably one of those layers is going to be or one of those sides is going to get quite torn and damaged but you should be able to tear it to a point you know where you've got one good side um, and you may be wondering why would you do that but <laughs> the reason being <laughs> is because just sometimes I'm finding it even a bit too thick for embellishment pieces. So, you know, it's worth bearing in mind that just occasionally, depending on the paper, you may be able to separate the, you know, double-sided thickness, not to use both sides though, because invariably one will get damaged. So, you know, choose the side that you want to preserve, you know, and um, look after. And then go for it with the other, the other side. There we go, two down, ten to go. Ten to go and then we can decorate one. So I'm not sure which one to decorate yet. But hopefully, you know, inspiration will strike. And again, you know, because we're using strap, uh, well, using scraps, and um, making on mass, you know, or in mass, uh, I'm just really trying to be very good and only use stuff from around my desk. So, you know, that will be the intention here to only use things that I've actually got to hand, not be digging out other things. I mean, obviously, you know, and I know I say this all the time, but obviously the advantage that I have is because my desk's full of scraps. You know, there's endless rubbish on here. So if you have quite a tidy desk and you're thinking you will decorate from scraps and what's around your desk, you might want to pile some rubbish up on there. <laughs> you might want to make some desk ephemera before you embark on your project. There we go. I don't need to do that because I have got a ton of desk ephemera already here. You know, which obviously at times does prove pretty useful. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've actually lost track now. I can't actually remember whether we are up to, you know, is this week eight or week nine? I actually can't remember. Um, you know, until I come to upload it and see the number on the video, I won't know which number we're up to. Um, I mean, if this is week eight, if it's week eight, I mean, if we just averaged it out, even said we've made ten pieces per week, because I know that there was at least one week. Oh, I nearly glued that down the wrong way. Um, I know that there was at least one week where we only made about six or seven and I have a feeling that might have happened a couple of times so even if we called it you know ten a week 
then we are up to approximately 80, you know, give or take, um, 80 pieces ready, ready to use, which is pretty cool, isn't it? There we go. I mean, obviously, you know, different people fill their different, you know, their journals different ways, don't they? And, um, you know, some people like a much fuller journal than others. Some people prefer it a little bit plainer with more kind of writing space. Um, you know, I am very bad for filling it to the brim. I just can't resist because uh, everything is so nice. But as soon as I you know, get making, you know, I just spot one nice thing after another, you know, be it lace or trim or bling or, you know, a printable or, you know, an image, a die cut, you know, anything and everything. It just looks so nice that I can't then resist. So, um, yeah. So that would depend obviously how long your stash is going to last, you know, depending on how much stuff you put in your journal. But I mean, hopefully we're going to do this, you know, for several weeks and um, make lots of different style pieces, as we've talked about, you know. Um, oh, gosh, the wipe is stuck on my finger with glue now. Um, yeah, hopefully we're going to use a whole bunch of different things. So, you know, by the end of this process, you'd have a lot of unique style pieces you know, to use rather than like, I don't know, have say, you know, six of this type of pocket in a journal, you know, depending on how many weeks we do these workshops for. And obviously the way they're received will depend how long we do them for. You know, if they're not really proving very popular, then I won't probably be pursuing them for so long. But, you know, if they're proving quite popular, then obviously we can... Um, go on for ages you know and you'd have all sorts of different bits and bobs to be able to use so you know it really is dependent on um yeah kind of I guess enjoyment level and you know how much people are getting from this process because you know there's absolutely no point doing it if nobody's watching obviously well I mean there would still be point for me because I would still ultimately be building up my supplies but probably not worth me sitting here chatting you know <laughs> although I mean I do find it more fun chatting with you guys than just doing it in a solitary way um, but obviously it would seem a little bit pointless after a while you know if I you know if people weren't really enjoying them I would be feeling a little bit sort of silly, I suppose, for putting the videos up there. So, um, you know, because obviously we want to do things that are going to be of use to people and of interest. So, right. Oh, I'm now, I cannot wait to decorate one. I mean, I have talked before about, you know, part of why I decided to do these workshops was, you know, I had lots of people saying, obviously, um, you know, how can they build up their stash? How can they build up their ephemera pieces and things like that? How can they use up their stash also with another, you know, and scraps and stash and things. So that was another thing. Um, but also, you know, I've said a lot of times, you know, I just really do not bulk make anything because you know, this to me is really tedious, doing one thing after another, just repeats. Um, I like to just make one thing and then decorate it and then make something else and decorate it. You know, that's that's just me. Um, so now, I mean, I don't know how many I've got left now to do. I think I've got about another four. So, you know, this must now be my eighth one. Oh, I now cannot wait, literally cannot wait to get through those four and actually decorate one. You know, I mean, I really can't wait. So, um, yeah. 
but you know I do like the fact that I'm doing them blank blank canvas style because uh, the thought that I'm going to have a bunch you know ready for decorating that to me is very fun so Oops, I nearly forgot to actually glue this one up. There we go. Okay, we're on the home stretch now. Come on. I'm actually quite hungry now as well as thirsty, so um, my brain is just turning completely to mush now. So... I dread to think what my decorating is going to actually go like at the end of this. Maybe not brilliant. Maybe not brilliant at all. So I should probably start looking around my desk while I'm actually doing this and sort of planning roughly, you know, what I'm going to do. I don't even know which piece I'm going to decorate. I, yeah. No particular one is kind of calling to me, so I'll just pick any one at all. Actually, I think there is one calling to me. Yeah, I think one is, but I don't know whether I've got any of the bits that, you know, kind of just suddenly had a fleeting image of what I could do with it, and now I'm not sure whether I've actually got any of those bits, and because I'm not wanting to go pulling extra things in onto my desk. I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to do it. So I'll have to have a look in a moment. After I've um, you know, finished sticking all of these down, I'll have to have a look and see whether I've got the bits. Right. I don't know why, but I seem to have now suddenly swapped to gluing the flap down first rather than gluing the paper on first. I mean, I don't think there's any right or wrong. You know, I don't think one way is any better than the other. It's just interesting that I seem to have suddenly swapped to doing it that way. It's as the boredom sinks in. I'm now just trying to liven things up a little bit with... Um, gluing in a different order <laughs> let's glue in a different order that will make it much more exciting okay on the home stretch this is the second to last okay Still mixing things up, just still sticking my flap down first, look. Wow, there's no end to the excitement here, is there? And then glue my piece of paper on. Yay! Okay, nearly there. Nearly there. Oh. Desperate. Desperate for it to finish. <laughs> well, I have to say, if I'm desperate for it to finish, you guys must be completely desperate for it to finish. I don't know why these have been the worst ones to bulk make. I think the other ones were maybe slightly more exciting because there was a bit more folding and things like that going on. Or maybe actually trying to be really efficient and do all of the cutting and then all of the gluing you know in one hit maybe that's my mistake because actually maybe that's made it too boring too much of a boring method to use yeah maybe that's what it is right come on out the way i'm really covered covered in glue and i'm covered in ink from earlier as well from the video I did earlier, so um, you have to excuse my 
gluey, inky hands. And obviously the fact that I'm now getting stuck to everything I touch, you know, every time I kind of go over there in that direction, that wipes then stuck on me. Right. Oh, yay. Yippee. That's the 12th one done. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Right, oh my gosh, and then we're up to like 49 minutes. Let me really quickly see whether I've got the piece that I had in mind. Oh no, I don't think I have. Mm, I'm gonna have to do something on the fly. Let me just really have a look. Oh, oh what's that? No, 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 no. Oh no. Oh, that's so annoying. So annoying. And the worst of it is, I bet I have got one. I'm looking for one of my little typewriters from my Fussy Cuts. And I felt sure that I did have one here somewhere. Cannot see it anywhere. And what's so annoying, I bet you I have still got one here somewhere. And it's just out of sight for the moment. So, um, oh, that's very annoying. Right, okay, have to have a rethink. Because I was going to go for this one with one of the typewriters. Right, so not doing that now. So let's see what else we've got. Oh, that's quite nice there. Again, I'm just grabbing things in from my rubbish that's just here. You know, really, really, really trying to be disciplined. Do not pull anything else in. Ah, right, what's I got here? It's a bit weird having like the butterfly theme with the roses paper. I love the label. So I'm definitely gonna go for that. This piece here. No. Mm. I'm just really aware of you know how long this video has been going on for already. Oh, I love it like that, weirdly. I don't know why, but yeah, for some reason that just is looking really nice. So I'm going to stick it like that. Let's just take this. This is just a piece from my TikTok kit um you know just an off cut that's just been sat here on my desk so i just glue that there like that okay this is just a piece from my very vintage kit again just an off cut you know these are literally you know as i say just pieces that are left over laying around on my desk so, you know, I am not not grabbing anything special or anything like that. I'm um, just using 100% just rubbish, you know, scraps that otherwise are just laying about. So that's that one. I'm just going to check whether I wanted anything different on here rather than butterfly or anything. That's a stamped image, which she's beautiful, isn't she? You know, very, um, very nostalgic kind of looking. Mm, still rummaging, still rummaging. Sorry about this, guys. The thing is, you know, until you do these videos, you don't necessarily know what pieces you're going to actually want. You know, it's very hard to kind of pre-plan to the extent you know that you actually then know what you're going to do with the you know the finished piece really perhaps i'll have it like that what do you think is that a bit weird well it's quite pretty isn't it so what i might do is ink this up i'm just looking for my little piece of scrap paper that i like to put down i mean i say to protect my desk that's just a bit of a joke really but and it's not even my desk, it's my worktop saver, so I don't really need to be protecting it anyway, but I will just um, pop that down. So. I've got my vintage velvet. Now where's my vintage photo gone? There we go. Just ink it up. Only 
again, I've forgotten that this is actually quite a new ink pad, so coming out quite a lot. Maybe I can just wipe that a bit. Well, I might, I might do that in slow time if I remember. Sorry, just keep knocking my scissors there. and then let me just see whether I've got a little bit of lace or something so let me just have a look oh where's my lace trim now oh this is now turning into one of those you know how not to do it videos Oh, which just is so frequently the case, isn't it? So, um, right, hold on. Just cutting a piece of lace here, so. Right. You could have it at the top, like that. So, just trim it down first. Like that. Just check I've got it the right way round. Just going to cut that you know, the seam type part off because I don't like that. I don't always dislike it. It depends on the piece. I don't like it for this piece. Do we want it there or do we want it there? I think probably at the top, although it's quite nice at the middle. Uh, now, if I wanted to have some pearly trim, oops, oh, come on, now look, everything's sticking to me and just making it really hard to actually get anything now. Right, so I'm just going to pop that lace trim across the top there. wipe and then if I just make that a three rather than that great big bit that it was so I'll just glue this lady on yeah I was hoping that this was going to help to clear my desk of things now that does not appear to be happening my desk is still just as full as always which is a shame because um you know obviously it would be good to be having a bit of a bit of a cleansing effect going on okay pop that down like that and then i'm just going to pop these pearls along the top just stick them with the wet glue that's fine whoops well, it would be fine if they weren't sticking to me more than the, the piece of lace. Right, so that's that piece. All done and decorated. Looks really pretty. So, that's it. And just, only just within time. So, that's our piece. Let me pull in a page. That's how that would look on a journal page. So yeah, hope that you managed to make some and hope you're managing to uh, whittle your stash down a little bit. Um, and hopefully you're going to join me next week for another um, one of our weekly workshops. So thanks very much for watching and see you all again soon. Thanks then. Bye.